Now, a Republican view, Senator Mike Rounds of South Dakota. Senator, thank you for joining us this morning. I know you've had a long night as well. We just heard Senator Coons say that this bill is going to be a boon to consumers, a boon for the economy. Your response? I think he was partially right. I uh, should have said boondoggle. In this particular case, it's not going to do much to help inflation. We're still going to have a problem there. And yet at the same time, they're going to be collecting about real close to $740 billion in new tax revenue over the next uh, supposedly five to 10 years. But most certainly, it's not going to help get us through a tight, a tight time in which we're worried about coming out of a recession. We've got two quarters in a row with uh, declining GDP. This is not the time to raise taxes. And most certainly, it's not the time in which we start adding additional government employees. We're talking 87,000 more IRS employees. I don't think very many American citizens are going to want to see that. As you know, the Joint Tax Committee found that the bill will not raise taxes or increase spending over the long term, and there is no tax increase for families under $400,000. Well, actually, we would disagree with that because it's all passed down. And what you're going to see are normal American families actually see the impact of what happens whenever you put new taxes on our economy. Now, they talk about it being on big corporations, but big corporations raise prices they do pass it all down. <clears throat> so from our perspective, we will see those tax increases coming down the line, and Americans are going to feel it. The, the bottom line on this is, is that what they're really trying to do is to take dollars in and then redistribute it back out to the places that they think it should be done. And in this case, they're looking at things that they want to do, primarily on climate change. This is not the time to be experimenting in that area. Well, there are going to be tax breaks for energy as well, and as you know, that this uh, there will be... Uh, in a lowering of prescription drug prices for people on Medicare. Uh, those on Medicare tend to vote. Well, in this particular case, so they've done two things. First, they took, they're taking dollars out of Medicare that would otherwise go to normal prescription drug prices. They're putting it in to subsidize Obamacare. And we understand that that's a product that they want to continue to subsidize. They're going to take money from Medicare, put it into Obamacare. But at the same time, they're saying that they're going to tell the, 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 the drug companies that you have to sell it for less to the federal government. But first of all, it doesn't start for four years. And second of all, one, once it does start, what do you think the drug companies are going to be doing when they start being dictated to? And, the, and by the way, this is not a negotiation. This is where the federal government literally walks on in and says, if you want to provide any prescriptions here, we will tell you how much we will pay, period, end of story. And if you don't like it, there's a huge, huge tax burden that we will inflict upon you. This is not healthy, it's not good, and it will cause problems in the marketplace. You talked about the possibility of a recession. We just saw that jobs report on Friday, 528,000 <clears> new jobs in July, 3.5% unemployment. That's a 50-year low. There are, there are two parts that we want to remember. First of all, we know that our GDP has gone down the last two quarters. So let's all recognize that that's accepted by everybody. That is down. The second part is, is that while we're very happy to see the job growth positive thing, Remember that back in the 1970s and moving into the 1980s, we actually saw job growth because unless your wages are keeping up with inflation, payrolls actually go down in value. And so what you're actually seeing, we believe, might be a precursor to what's to come. You're going to find out larger companies such as Walmart are already talking about starting to reduce the number of people that they're going to be employing. But in the meantime, if your wages, if you can save on wages, because as inflation goes up, the value of the wages is not as great as it was unless it's also going up at the same or greater rate, well, then you can afford to have people stay on the payroll, and your payroll actually goes down compared to what the, the products are that you're producing or that you're buying and moving through the market. So this is, while it's good and we want to see job growth, I don't think we can necessarily say that that is not a precursor yet to probably some more serious economic issues coming very shortly. We hope that we're building our way out of a recession, but you don't do that by raising taxes. You do it by promoting and expanding businesses, getting the economy rolling again. Let's talk about the issue of abortion rights. We saw that vote in Kansas this week where voters rejected an attempt to amend the Constitution in a way that would have undermined abortion rights. I know there's now a move to put a constitutional amendment on the ballot in South Dakota to protect abortion rights. When you look at what happened in Kansas, do you think a ballot measure like that could pass in South Dakota? I think this is one that it's going back to where it should go, which is back to the people and back to the states. 
I like the idea of having uh, people actually debate and discuss the issue. In South Dakota, we had a trigger law, which we actually signed when I was governor, and it said that, that basically abortion was going to be illegal unless it was to save the life of the mother. Now, I think the legislature can come back in. It's now been 17 years since that trigger law was put in effect, and they'll be able to discuss it, debate it, take public testimony, and come back what they think is the best if they want a different alternative. And at the same time, in South Dakota, like other states, if the legislature does not do something which finds consensus, then there's always the possibility of a referendum or a, a referred measure or an initiated measure. So it is back where it should be, and, and that is, is back to the states, and then uh, we'll let the people and the legislative bodies decide exactly what they think is uh, you know, the long-term approach. Uh, me personally, I am pro-life. I believe that abortion is wrong, but this is an issue that uh, the legislative bodies should take on, they should debate it, and they should decide what will be the test of time in each state. President Trump signaled again last night at the CPAC conference that he's looking to run for president in 2024. Your colleague, Lindsey Graham of South Carolina, seems to be encouraging him to run. Are you going to join that effort? Well, on this particular case, I'm going to focus on the 2022 election. We've got to win that back. But I'll, hold my, I'll keep my powder dry for the uh, 2024 run. Let's see who else is coming up. You want someone else? I most certainly think it's going to be a wide open field. And you know, the one thing in the, in, in the Republican Party, we're going to be talking about the ideals, the principles moving forward. Democrats right now would love to see President Trump announced before the 2022. And I think the reason why is because they'd like to have that draw, uh, t draw attention away from the 22 election and the candidates that they've got. And the other thing here is, is that right now with uh, President Biden as far underwater as what he is, their principles, their issues, the fact that inflation is at over 9%, GDP is down. I think this is a good time for them to try to be looking at other things to talk about, and uh, they're not going to want to talk about the economy right now. Am I, am I right to conclude from that that whatever President Trump decides, you want him to wait until after the midterms to announce? M most certainly, I think that would be good because I think the Democrats would like to have him draw attention away from the 2022. We have to have a good, strong showing in the 2022. I feel very strongly about that because we've got to be able to take back the House and love to take back the Senate as well, and then we'll have divided government, but at least we'll be able to slow down some of these rather radical ideas that they're putting out right now. Senator Rounds, thanks for your time this morning. Thank you.